So to get it started, let me turn it over to Linda Yaccarino, president of advertising sales at NBC Universal, and David Bank, managing director at RBC Capital Markets. Thank you. Why don't we, why don't we pick the middle? Okay. Fine. We had other people, but no one wanted to show up with us. So hang on, I'm going to put this over here. Linda but was the only person not afraid of Wall Street. So. <laughs> That's not entirely true, but um, welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We're so excited. We, I personally have been looking forward to this all week. I don't know if many of you know David, but I'll tell you a little bit about him as managing director of equity research at RBC Capital Markets. David has been named the best on the street by the Wall Street Journal. And he's here with us today, May time. Um, he's been with <clears throat> RBC for 14 years, covering telecommunication and media companies. And before he became a research analyst, he was an investment banker. So we're excited to have him today. Well, thank so, you very much. Thank you. Um, as many of you may have caught his report um, that came out in June, I think, talked about uh, the impact on our industry and the effect that online video may or may not have on our business. So it kind of caught my eye because you said that the advertising threat posed by online video to traditional television might not be all it's cracked up to be. So right. we'd love to hear you talk about that. So Thank you very much, by the way. For, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, we like someone who's bullish on so, television, so have at it. So about nine months ago, I got an influx of calls from very large institutional investors who said, money's coming out of scatter, and it's going into online video. Everybody's telling us that. And you, know, you just keep hearing about online video, and it must be true. It must be true. Money's coming out of scatter, and it's going into online video. And you know, we can't, we can't from the outside account for where every piece of money is going, but we, we checked with our sources in the industry on the ad agency side with sellers and buyers. Didn't seem like a whole lot of money was going into online, uh, online video. So investors wouldn't take our word for it. And what we decided to do was try and quantify the market. Mm -hmm. How much substitutable inventory was there really on an apples to apples basis TV for online video inventory. We found out two things. The first one was that there wasn't a tremendous amount of demand for most online video inventory. There is for some advertisers, but traditional TV advertisers, our sense was, really didn't contextually want you know, the kind of content that was often available and the duration of the video. How do you put a 30 second unit adjacent to a 30 second so Fine. you're talking right, so. long form versus short Correct. form. Correct. So let's, let's, if you eliminate the lack of demand for the bulk of the video that was really out there, well, there is demand for premium online video. The problem there is there isn't very much of it. That's right. And guess what? What we found out when we sized the market was that the majority of that premium video was owned by the big media companies. So it was as if... If there was a threat, it was from a linear platform mm -hmm. to the same company's owned digital platform. So, okay, they don't own all the online video. We, we examined the other online video on a premium basis that was available. And what we found out there was that on an ad impression minute equivalent, you know, think about it this way, the way, the way I think about it, you know, you get data points about billions of impressions in online video versus millions of audience viewers. But the load factor is 16 times higher in a half an hour, 32 times higher in an hour, right? So what is, what is 1 million of impression on TV is really 32 million of impression. In, in, so anyway, the, the upshot of it was when we compared on an on a ad minute like for like basis for the same kinds of content that you would demand as a TV advertiser, um, we said a perfect analysis would be, what is the equivalent of one week of Google Premium? 
If I could buy YouTube Premium, all I wanted, every dollar I wanted to spend, it was the equivalent. I'm sorry to mention another network, um, but we told it was stuff not to. It was the equivalent of one new episode of Big Bang. So that was sort of the upshot. So we kind of walked away thinking, gee, that's really not an enormous threat to the ecosystem. Well, we love to hear that. And I think the, the views or the bullish behavior on television overall, but particularly as it pertains to quality video, is something that, and one of the reasons that we all gather here in this room, because we believe that the television uh, business, or the networks as a whole, could probably do a little bit better of a job of talking about or describing the impact or the power of all of this great content, the way some of those companies talk about the, their content and the ability to reach a particular viewer. So the reason I say that is that we believe, too, that our industry is strong, but we have some limitations. Right. Measurement is just one of them. We're a little limited on how we can talk about our product because of measurement, but also there's some technology hurdles. So what do you think is standing most in our way in terms of communicating that message that TV broadcast is alive and well? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, when, we, when we speak with investors, one of the first slides I generally show them is uh, uh, Nielsen average viewership of television, mm -hmm. you know, average American viewership of television, which stands at, and this usually shocks most investors. I don't think it'll shock everyone in this room. It's between four and a half and five hours a day. Right? Nobody really knows where people get that much time to watch television, but apparently they do. <laughs> At, while that figure hasn't really changed very much over the past few years, mm -hmm. shockingly hasn't changed, uh, ratings data would suggest mm -hmm. that viewership is down okay. materially. So the challenge, how, how does that make sense? And by the way, Nielsen measurement is showing the same amount of viewership yet on, in hours per day, yet viewership for where you basically watch television is down. So what I think we struggle with, what we hope that the industry will do a better job is measuring uh, viewership outside of the arbitrarily chosen currency of C3. Mm -hmm. C3 is really not telling us very much anymore. Yep. Um, and so uh, that's a limitation. Um, and I think while there have been efforts to improve measurement across platforms, you know, m mobile, uh, mobile uh, measurement on a C3 basis, it seems as though you are, are not necessarily deploying the ability to measure it. We don't quite know why. Um, and, you know, we, we, we struggle a little bit with w w what are we measuring? Mm -hmm. We don't even know what we're measuring. Mm -hmm. So the, the second, I think, the second opportunity and challenge in, in, a, in a similar fashion um, is that we know that if a viewer watches a show after the third day of viewership, it's simply unmonetizable. Yeah. Um, we can't understand why dynamic ad insertion uh, isn't moving faster, allowing for greater monetization. We can't understand, you know, to, in our sense, it's a technology issue. It kind of happens at the box top. Mm -hmm. It has to do probably more with the distributor than it does with the media company. But that we don't really care about that. We don't care whose who's fault it is. Um, we just don't understand why it is that the industry isn't moving more rapidly to take advantage of dynamic ad insertion, which we see as just a ton of money being left on the table. And, and really not so much money, but impressions. Impressions that seem to be in such high demand. Do you see a time frame where you think? Because we're you know, all trying to run as fast as we can towards the implementation and sophistication for dynamic ad insertion. Is there something you project or a time frame that you're looking that it'll change? Well, I think, I think um, a lot of us are, are hopeful. You know, one, one potentially positive element of some of the consolidation that's going on on the distribution side is that maybe with fewer players, mm -hmm. Uh, it will be easy, easier to kind of herd the cats. Um, but I think, you know, we, we really don't know. It's a little bit like the TV Everywhere yes, conundrum in absolutely. that, like, what a great tool, fantastic, should be terrific for viewership, would make Netflix 
a, a solution looking for a problem. Mm -hmm. And yet we're really not as far along as, as we would have hoped to be on TV everywhere because it just hasn't been deployed. Right, absolutely. So we, we have to keep running in right. that direction, all of us invested. So, so I'm going to ask you a question, if I could, which is, uh -oh. what a great opportunity. <laughs> um, so we have, you know, for, for a long time covered the, the, the television industry, the network television industry. And I have steadfastly, with incredibly high conviction, uh, for a very long time, been able to walk into you know, an institutional money manager and say, um, there is simply no substitute for broadcast network television. Uh, when, I, when I go up around in the channels from you know, CMOs or um, industry folks, if you want to launch a new brand, if you want to launch a new car, if you want to open a movie on a Thursday night, um, when the stewardship of your brand is of the utmost importance, there is simply no substitute for broadcast television. And as a result, I've been able to feel confident that um, you know, th there would just be always demand um, for whatever inventory you could make available. Help me see the future. Help me remain steadfast in my conviction that there is no substitute for television. Well, um, I think I can help a little bit. Um, but it's funny that you, when you used the um, there is no substitute in the, in the answer to the first question I asked you, that was the one word that I wrote down. So we're kind of on the same, same track. When you think about all of the choice that's out there, whether it's linear or digital, um, I think it's one of the reasons that a lot of us walk around and talk about this is the most amazing age of television or of content that there is. There's so much incredible choice out there. So the amount of choice is kind of pushing the boundaries of creativity to make so much great content available. But in terms of you remaining steadfast and bullish on, on television, particularly broadcast television, um, if you even think about we're only about a week and a half into the new season, right? The, the first week, there were six of the top 10 shows that delivered a three or higher rating. Six of the top 10 shows. That's up two versus last year. Last year at this time, when we thought we were having a little renaissance in broadcast television, it was four of the top 10 shows over a three rating. So, so in the first week, broadcast, and you could tell I read a little data this morning that was coming in good information off the first week, that the new broadcast week reached almost 150 million people, okay? So the power for broadcast to reach out and with immediate scale get a viewer's, a consumer's attention, there still really is no substitute. And if you think about broadcast overall, where I know the press is mostly interested, and Wall Street, interested in prime time, but it really might just culminate with prime time. But when you start in the early morning and you look what goes on in early morning, with the, the early morning news shows, which is largely owned by broadcast, and it's that morning ritual every day that comes with your coffee and your orange juice, and it's your ability to get them and grab them into your networks, and you, you journey throughout the day, you have your big primetime experience, but you also have your, your late news, which still means something. What should I wear? What happened in my community? What's going on tomorrow? And you add to that what's going on in late night, talk about the strength and power of a reinvention of a day part, I think that really has a lot to do also with the power of broadcast TV and how solid the foundation of that delivery system, not to mention this great content, feeds the entire rest of the ecosystem that we talk about. So I have to say at, at my own company, I think I speak on behalf of my counterparts that we truly believe uh, Broadcast is alive and well. And, and if you think about what drives digital, the social conversations, even I mentioned late night, the digital voice as things get carried throughout um, through the late night landscape and go viral, you wake up first thing in the morning and you want to look at it. Um, that was the question that I was going to ask you as it pertains to digital because it, it's connected. Remain steadfast on television. But do you think digital alone could sustain this industry? Well, I'll give you the answer I would give uh, clients, which is I can't really see much beyond sort of 
five years, yeah. right? I think that's kind of a fair time frame to, to realistically view the industry. Um, given, the, given what we know about reach equivalents, um, an inventory that's available, and contextuality of programming, I think it is an impossibility. I mean, it's not even a, it, it's, it's really difficult to conceive of digital like as a substitute. Although the, the one caveat I would say is that ultimately a, a, lot of, a lot of digital content is linear television. Yes. So I'm not, it's, not, it's, it's linear television ported to digital. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how the world consumes its, con, you know, its television uh, in, after five years. But for today, in the way I think you're asking the question, you know, is, is, is could the world survive on Facebook alone? Right. Um, it, it seems to us like that would be very difficult. And, and that was how I was asking that question. But it's also interesting when you say uh, how the world is going to consume television. I think it actually requires a redefinition of what is a television. And it's really that how that content is pushed out or broadcast. So um, I have to say, I could sit here all day, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing your insights with us. And now, next up, it's uh, one of my colleagues, my partner in crime in all things broadcast, Toby Byrne, president of advertising at Fox and Fox Sports Media Group. So please thank David and welcome Toby.